Hello, friends. Um, so, as of recording this, the, um, the new tiering, the, th the tier shifts for, um, OU, um, the usage rates, everything like that, have, um, come out. Um, let me actually pull those up real quick. Um, here they are. Um, the usage rates for OU. Um, some of these kind of surprise me. I'm a little shocked. Um, not necessarily shocked, but it's it is surprising to see like Lander is so high, um, especially when Kiram was such a a broken mon, right? But it is cool to see him up there. Um, some expected ones like Great Tusk and King Gambit are both at the very top. Um, it is a little surprising that Great Tusk is so high, since I do think Landorus is a little bit more of a um, consistent mon in my opinion. But I mean, it's still like Great Tusk, right? So. I decided to um, build a tier list and just rank Pokemon that I um, have seen in the OU tier. I've gotten some of the more uh, viable ones, um, some UUBLs, some OUs. Uh, I don't remember if I put Garchomp here. I kind of did this all with one. I did. Um, we got like some of the mods that do like a unique thing. Um, I didn't put like Monkey Dory because he doesn't even exist in OU. At least things like Pheasantipity and. Uh, um, Ogie Dogie, um, accomplish something unique and can be tiered decently. Um, so right off the bat, I'm just gonna put the the gear like the known S tiers. Um, I think Broken is a little bit scuffed of a tier. Um, they're just gonna be mods that I think should be banned or are already banned, like like Kiram. Uh, I can talk about that stuff like that. Um, King Gambit is S tier. Um, Raging Bolt is S tier, and I think I think these two are the only like guaranteed S tiers. Um, they kind of do the same thing, right? Uh, King Gambit um, gets a a um, ten percent boost per dead ally, which means that it is like the greatest late game cleaner because at three faded allies, it has the boost of a life orb without having to sacrifice the item slot, and at if it's the final Pokemon, it has a choice band boost. Is like the best way to think about it. It's obviously like a little bit different in like the damage calculation, but it comes out to be roughly the same. Um, Raging Bolt is a little bit, or is almost the exact same, except it's a, it hits on the special side, which is generally harder for a lot of teams to um, withstand. Um, not necessarily like withstand, but like like a lot of the special walls can like just be brute forced by Raging Bolt in a way that I think King Gambit can't. Obviously, like, Terra Dark, you know, can blow through, like, even Dondozo, but, um, you know, you get the picture. Um, Raging Bolt, with a booster energy, gets, um, a 1.3 special attack boost, which, best way to think about it, it's hitting with the same boost as a King Gambit with three fainted allies. And that's off-rip. You can have that in um, end game, you can have it early game as, like, a breaker. Um, however, unlike King Gambit, it's not necessarily, like, confined to that role. Um, it can run Assault Vest, Choice Specs, Leftovers, and just like King Gambit, it can run practically any Terra that isn't, like, completely useless. Like, if the Terra accomplishes something, it, it can run that Terra. Um, and these both have setup options. Uh, Raging Bull is held back a little bit by lack of access to Nasty Plot. However, like, if this thing had Nasty Plot, it would be broken. Um, King Gambit has Swords Dance. Dark Steel is really hard to resist. Terra fly and then it beats all of its checks. Like it can, like both these mods can run Terras and just destroy their checks. They got priority to defeat the faster mods, um, and any slower mods are gonna have to take like two hits and probably can't um, kill them in one hit. They're just they're just very broken, or I'm not broken, but they're they're high S tier mods. I think at the very top. Um, next we get Alola Mola, or um, I guess first up um, would be better said. Um, Alola Mola is I think it is very good at what it does. Um, which is sponging hits and either wish passing or generating momentum. Um, it had an assault vest set, but I don't think that's particularly great. I think it's more consistent set is Rocky Helmet or um, Heavy Duty Boots, plus Wish, Scald, Protect, Toxic, Flip Turn, any combination of the, those options. And I think it gets knockoff too. Let me actually check. Um, hang on. I do have this tab pulled up. Make sure that I'm recording. I am. Nice. Um, uh, Lola Mola. I don't know why I tried to look it up. It, it is at the very top. 
Oh, um, it does not get knockoff. Did, did this thing get knockoff before? I, I swear I remember an Alola Mola with knockoff. Okay, yes, it got a knockoff before. And then lost it. So, it doesn't have knockoff now, but it doesn't necessarily need it. It is kind of hurting for, like, moves. Because you want to run Protect sometimes. Um, you know, so you can have, like, reliable healing. You want to run Toxic so you can beat, like, Stallmon. Scald is good. Flip Turn is good. And I think Flip Turn and Wish are two, like, essentials on the set. And then the last few slots can, like, vary. Just depending on what you're most comfortable with. I do think that's very important. Um, running the uh, Alola Mole set that you are most comfortable using. As opposed to, like, what is technically the best set. Um, but it's very good. It's not necessarily, like, broken. It's beaten by, like, Raging Bolts. If you don't Terra, it's beaten by Setup Mons. Although it can, like, reliably sponge a hit. If it doesn't burn, it's kind of, kind of scuffed. It fell off a lot because it just, like, loses to Kiram. There's nothing you can do to, like, the subset, for example. Just get, Kiram gets a free sub, and you don't want to give Kiram free turns. Because it is a mon that can get hacks. Um, Amoongus is up, and Amoongus with Spore, I think, is in the same tier as Alola Mola. It's very good at what it does. Gets Sleep Off, and then just chips things around, sponges hits. Um, however, without Spore, it's like, it's like a D tier mon. It's not the worst thing you could run, it still has, like, its uses. Um... In Gen 8, for example, um, before I don't know if this was before it had access to Spore, or while it had access to Spore, but it used to run like a Toxic thun or Para set um, to kind of like wear down bulk, like be good into bulkier teams and faster teams, because Para and po Toxic are like nearly impossible to reliably like be completely immune to. Plus, as like Sledge Bomb can fish for hacks. Foul play. It's, it's good bulky. Um, but it's just, like, without Spore, really, D, F, D tier? I think I think it's, like, F tier. Like, it's one of the worst grass types, especially grass types, that you can run. Not, a, not necessarily a phenomenal defensive poison type. There's better options. Um, Sinastra has picked up in usage, and it kind of just, like, without Regenerator, does what Amogus wants to do. Um, there's just really... I haven't used it on an OU team, like, because I wanted to have it as a flex option. I I will u pro maybe have a team with it, but that's just because I want to use Among Us. Um, Blaziken's up, and I think, I think, like, Blaziken and Sarah Ledge are, uh, although, I, I think, I think Sarah Ledge is a little, a little bit more consistent because it has access to weak armor and a healing option, like, it's, it's stab doesn't kill it or weaken its, um, defenses. On the flip side, Blaziken, um, like, it's, it's good, it will generally trade one for one, but it runs into the same problem as Serilet, where it just is completely destroyed by Dondozo, by Lola Mola, stuff like that, and you can't literally break through it. I mean, like, you and Serilet break through it in, like, the same way, right? Um, I don't think, like, Blaziken's UUBL, because it's, like, it just isn't used, um, but I think if I had to think, make a say, Serilet is a little bit, like, better. Um, from like Terra Grass, and then like, it sponge like a Tusk hit, and then get all its HP back with Bitter Blade, and all of a sudden you have a, like its defense is lowered, but like, if it's Sash for example, or, really I think, I think it like, at base lives a Dragonite hit, like Dragonite Extreme Seed, which is like, I think the strongest priority, ignoring, um, like Terra Dragonite Extreme Speed, ignoring, um, King Gambit's Terra Dark Sucker Punch, which you are not living no matter what. But very few mods can live a plus or er, um, max fallen uh, King Gambit Terra Dark Sucker Punch. So it's not like points against it. It's just welcome to Gen 9. Um, but yeah, like Blaziken just doesn't feel good. I don't use it because I want uh, because I want an optimal team. I use it because I want to use Blaziken. However, Seralege like does have pretty good sets. Um, it's it's very viable. Um, Blissey kind of fell off, um, it's been on and off, but I think it's more like on the D tier of special wall. Oh, but in like C tier. It, it will always do what you want it to do. However, it just doesn't generate momentum. It beats the special attackers, but that's about all it does, especially like, it's not like phenomenal when like Claude Zire beats it, Spideff Alola Mola beats them, um, like any Regen Vestmon is pretty solid into, um, Special attackers, like, 
even now if I were to like have a team where I like need like a special wall, I'll run like Slow King or Clodsire because benefit of like clearing up T spikes, they can set up hazards or toxic or set up future sites, they can pivot out, which is a huge um or not not both of them, but like Slow King Galar can pivot out, which is huge. You don't have to waste a turn predicting, you just get out, clear the weather. It, it's it's pretty awesome. Um, but Blissey kind of like C tier. And how I'm going to do it is like a lot of the UUBL mons will fall into like C, D, or F tier. And a lot of the UU mons will fall even lower. Um, I think B tier is set up for like the solid OU mons. And C tier is kind of like the, the OU mons that I think are a little bit worse or whatnot. Um, Cinderace is here and I don't know. I think Cinderace is kind of C tier. Like it's, it's, it's strong, it's powerful. And like, it is fairly versatile. Sorry. But, I don't know, it just doesn't feel like it gets that much work done. Um, especially with like, like you want it because it can like clear hazards and do good damage. But like it's Wisp set is kind of like beaten out because Dragapult is just that guy. Um, it's fast, but not fast enough to really outspeed like what it really wants to like you're slower than meow scarada slower than dark cry slower than dragapult um which isn't like inherently terrible like i mean there there's there's mods that are slower or that, that are like um slower than them as well that pop off um uh, but like i don't know it's point it's stat points just don't feel like great at least on the same tier like we don't have b tier mods yet but like I think I think the B tier mods will definitely like be better than Cinderace. I still use it a lot, um, and so maybe I'll put it in B tier, but it will be the bottom of B tier. So I'll put every B tier mod will just go above it, um, for that reason. Uh, we got Clefable, which mm, I don't really use a lot of Clefable. Um, it's a good mod, I'll admit that. Um, I do think it is more consistent than Blissey, more consi consistent than Serilege, and I think it's more consistent than Cinderace, so I'll put it in B tier. Um, I mean, Clefable just does Clefable things, right? You invest um, points into one specific stat, and then you, you tank those hits, and you die on the other side. Kind of just Clefable, can get up rocks, spread status, knock off, Moonblast, which is why it's better than Blissey by a long margin. Um, it's, it's very good into, like, because there, there's a lot of, like, fairy weak Pokemon that are just phenomenal right now. Um, unaware sets beat, like, the annoying setup sweepers. Well, they have to be, like, careful of booster energy mons, because I'm pretty sure booster energy tusk kind of just blows it up. And that's sad. Um, but beyond that, like, you're, you're pretty solid into the metagame abroad. I don't know why I put Manaphy here. Oh, wait, wait, no, I thought Manaphy was banned for some reason. Because I haven't seen it. No, Manaphy's just bad. Which is insane to me. Um, Claude Zyre, I'll put it in B tier. I kind of touched on this before, but like, access to hazards, access to toxic, um, on its Bedef mod makes it more consistent than Blissey. I think its defensive qualities are a lot more consistent than Clefable. Because with Clefable, you kind of are like, not like, required, obviously. But like, I feel like with Clefable, I'm trying to like, I'm wanting to switch it into like, um, like fighting moves which are physical or dark moves that are generally special and it's like it's it's scope is too i don't know it just I, if it's a if it's points in attack were like into as as like one of its defensive stats it would be like incredible but um it's not and claude's Iyer is a little bit better in the regard that like what you want to switch it into like the special attacks aimed at it and the moves that it resists generally are, are special um not all of them obviously like great tusk um like like fighting is a, is a big thing but like beyond that like you're switching it into um a lot of neutral hits especially so it's kind of like blissy in that regard um water absorb beats the water types um i guess my point doesn't stand that strongly um but like it kind of just is blissy um but it can set up rocks, generate momentum. Um, we got Corviknight now, and a lot of the more defensive mons, I think, are are incredible. Corviknight's kind of popped off recently. Um, Iron Defense Body Press beats King Gambit. 
defog with defog you know um, flex option u turn uh, roost just consistent overall mon it's running three attacks now um, with iron head or u turn um, it just it's very good at tanking heads um, what it does is incredible and it's really hard to come by like steel flying is insane defensively so it will never be bad like even if corviknight drops like are you i think as long as like there isn't just like corviknight 2 it will always have a niche in overused just because of its typing like it is blown up by like a lot of terra heads but like the, the things that it invalidates are just like so wide and the fact that like it can like can and usually will just beat gambit outright is, is like points to it um I, i'm kind of happy that core of night is good doing well unfortunately it means skarmory is inherently just like lesser but that's fine um cresselia is here and cresselia is Cr cresselia cresselia i call it cresselia because it feels fun to say but cresselia is just not good um yeah no i don't like it's worse than Blaziken because sometimes it just won't trade. Its defensive stats are not that great. I think it's too widespread. Um, needs to be a little bit more min-maxed into like a specific trait. Crazy saying that, right? Like, let me let me pull up like Cresselia's base. Like, it is incredibly bulky, but like it doesn't resist anything. It's weak to knock off, weak to U-turn. Um, it's a Terra it. Um, I mean its recovery is fine. But it's not doing a lot of damage. It's just not doing much. Like the the, the Calm Mind Store Power set is fine, but it's it's slow. It's not the greatest. Pr uh, prone to crit, at Terra it. Um, actually, thinking like I'd put it on the same level as Blaziken, I guess, as in terms of like gimmick. Um, and for the same reason, I'll put a Mungus. I think F tier would be reserved for like the the really really shit viable mons or like the mons that are like viable because of a gimmick um dark Ray is here and dark Ray is one of the pokemon that i actually think are a little broken it's really bulky really fast can run sash has infinite coverage um can basically like pick and choose what it will lose to um with focus blast you beat the the uh, steel and dark types that want to switch into you um Sludge Bomb, you beat the Fairy types, you can Terra. I, I really enjoy running Terra Poison just as like a like an all-purpose, all-around Iron Valiant check. Because no matter what, Iron Valiant should never one-shot you unless it's running Psyshock. Which is not a common move that you want to click into, into Darkrai unless you're reading. In which case, congratulations, but yeah. Um, it's insane, it was broken with sleep. Um, I'm gonna put it in broken tier. I really think it's that good. I really don't. Hmm. Let me think about it. It's it's resistant resistant to priority, but it is kind of. I mean, Dark is just so good. It can snowball against like certain teams very easily. Um. Although, like, it is slower than Polt. Um. Mm, I'll put it in S tier. I think it's a it's a great one. Um, Deoxys is here, and it's kind of like, to me, Deoxys is kind of the jack of all trades, master of none. It's it will always get up to like a layer of spike at least, which is pretty good. Um, generally, can get up like a spike and a rock, spike and a taunt, spike and a psycho boost. Um, with the life orb set, it will generally trade one for one at least because it's just so fast, and it will always like the the thing that a lot of people like have a hard time understanding and like me me included is that like the fast like the faster a bond is the less doing like 30 or 40 percent matters because that 30 or 40 percent you'll have to take 80 percent because you're hit twice 30 percent you're gonna take 60 percent so like a little bit of chip is more or less all it needs or like one crit and then you're, you're done for and the faster mons generally will get more hacks because they're just clicking more attacks um, so I'll, I'll put it in, like, the same tier as Cinderace. I think it's just as viable. Um, Don Dozo's here, and it's, it is the, the pinnacle of physical wall. It's a water type, so great defensive typing. Um, it's, it's great neutrally, and, like, 
I, I would say that like what it resists or what's weak to are hitting it on the special side generally, but that's not true anymore. Um, which is like, I mean, it, obviously like you're not staying in on like electric type attacks, but you can stay in on like a lot of grass type attacks. Like, I mean, Rillaboom Woodhammer is going to kill you, but like unbanded Miascarada Flower Trick, I doubt even has like a chance to kill you and even banded like i don't know i'm not 100 percent sure but like you could probably like live or you could terra and then if you if you terra on dozo and kill their like for the for like killing their grass type you can open up like other water types on your team um it, it's it's great it you know helps against king gambit helps against tusk all the physical attackers are more or less like stonewalled by don dozo unless they're like insane like king gambit with like terra dark kowtow you're gonna you're usually gonna lose to that but even then you can run like terra fighting or terra fairy or body press wave crash which is pretty good on this one because of how big its hp stat is you're not taking that much damage right like 33 percent of like a greninja's hp for example is like 20 percent or like 15 for don dozo which is kind of insane. Um, I'll put it in A tier. You'll you'll see a lot of the more defensive bulky mods are generally just higher because they're just, I mean, they're they're just consistent. They they will always get their job done generally. Um, however, more discrepancy. Dragapult S tier. It literally literally does everything. I mean, there's not one thing Dragapult doesn't do. It can be defensive. It can be, or defensive with like. Will-O-Wisp and Hex, U-Turn, Dragon Darts. It can be purely offensive with Bandit or Specs. You can run Sash, you can run um, Boots, you can run it mixed. Um, I like it currently, just like low ladder elo farming. I really enjoy running um, like a, uh, a, a Dragapult with... Um, I'm trying to think, sorry. A Dragapult with um, Zorark and kind of baiting the fact like that I'm like physical pult and so whenever Zorark comes in they're they're thinking oh okay let me go into my my uh, physical wall and then they get um their physical wall shift which just opens up banded Dragapult to, to just sweep um that's very strong like Terra Ghost Terra Blast like Dragapult with, dra with um Ghost Stat like there's a reason that that like it's 120 attack like easy is crazy coming off of that much speed it, it does what like Darkrai does but to like a much greater extent so i'll put dragapult like i think i think dragapult is like the most like greatest mod in ou currently because it does everything and will always do what you want it to do i think every single team can have dragapult and still get the core message of the team across and there'll, there'll be like very little overlap with roles um, um, not every team wants a King Gambit. Maybe it's a it's a bulkier team or like an offensive team that just can't slot King Gambit because you have too many dark types or you, for whatever reason, right? You're running like Roaring Moon and want that to be your dark type or like, like that, that's a valid reason. Or like Raging Bolt, you don't want to run a slow electric type. Run Dragon Bolt. Or you can run Dragapult in conjunction with these mods, and you've got a monster of a team. Um, because Dragapult will always like wear down like whatever you want it to. And get that job done. Um, okay, on to Dragonite. Um, strongest extreme speed in the game. Um, great snowballing potential. Can run um special moves like I um depending on the team, I'll run like Hurricane or Thunder, depending on if I want to hit like Don Dozo for big damage or Great Tusk for big damage. Um can really mix and match like it's kind of like king gambit in the sense that like whatever move you run means like you can you can pick or pick and choose like which mons will like wall you generally um you're not i don't think that you kill don dozo or tusk in like a single hit and you have to hit your inaccurate moves but if you hit like dragonite probably will just win um but it'll always be like terra normal extreme speed like what like the hits that you that you have to like watch out for will always be the hits that you have to watch out for and that's kind of just the fact like the the thing of playing dragonite um however i think it's really really solid top of a tier um it's very um replaceable 
like priority is not hard to come by however terra nor extreme speed is like it just it's just good um there's a lot of dra um, ghost types running around if you're on adamant and you're not outspeeding dragonfall after a plus one i don't even know if um jolly outspeeds after a plus one um dragonfall so you're kind of goobed into that you're gonna get like wisped or dracoed or whatever but, like other than that like I mean, well, big whoop, you lose to Dragapult. Congratulations, you're every mon in the OU tier. Um, Enamorous, I think, is a solid B tier mon. Uh, actually, let me, like, talk about it. And then I'll then I'll make my my thing. The problem with Enamorous is, like, like both of its sets... Like, the, the, the idea around running, like, a flexible Pokemon, like Dragapult or um, Raging Bolt, even with like where you like switch around the item or the moves or whatever um is the fact that you do that so you can like counter different mods however enamorous's counters should and will always generally just be the same core mods if your scarf i think being like locked into a fairy type attack as an offen offensive mod is pretty bad in this format um it's not like the worst um, like, you, you literally hit all of, like, in my opinion, the best mons um, for Super Effective, but, like, Heatran is pretty good and just owns you. Um, Goldango will, like, defeat, like, the, the Scarf Superpower Moonblast sets. It, um, it will lose to, like, um, Earth Power, but, like, a lot of golds are, um, on a balloon, so you have to get, like, the Moonblast read right, and then you have to, like, rebound off of Gold Goldango, you have to get, like, every read right, and which just isn't fun generally um you're not like even killing a terra dark king gambit which is very funny um with either of your stabs um it's terra stellar sets are fine but um it's not as strong as like one would be led to believe because of the mechanic where terra stellar will give you a 1.3 times boost on your first hit and then you like lose that quote unquote stab so instead of doing like 50 percent more damage on your second hit you're doing like 20 percent more damage which is like, still a lot and it has like potential to snowball because it resists like the two more spammable priority moves in um, grassy glide and um sucker punch but like nah like it snowballs in the same way that like king game snowballs but a little bit better in my opinion um if you run the superpower set you're generally running like a minus something nature which just opens up like You'll probably be one shot by Dragapult. You'll probably be one shot by um, just just a Terra Dark King Gambit. Um, it's just not the greatest. Um, we got Extra Drill here, and extra, I think Extra Drill is one of the worst mons, unfortunately, that you could run in OU. Um, it's okay on Sand Team teams. However, like the the nice thing about Extra Drill in the past is that it will always outspeed. Um, on all the unscarfed mons and a lot of like the base what is it base uh i think a hundred scarfers does it have to be scarf latios i know scarf latios reaches what is it um i'm trying to remember off the top of my head 525 so let me see if extra drill i don't think extra drill does um no it actually does i i pretty sure right it's up to five and then is it tied is it tied wait 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 wait, wait. let me make sure that my numbers are right yeah, that, that's okay latios is 525 and then 275 times 2 550 okay so it does outspeed scarf latios um like the nice thing about extra of the past is that you, you can you can run adamant and, and no matter what you'll outspeed most of the real like the generally reliable scarfers you only lose like kind of gimmicky scarfers um like uh a scarf greninja will beat you but scarf greninja isn't like the most common thing generally like people run like battle bond but you still lose Gren to greninja anyways because of water shuriken but you know i mean it, you force it you force it to lock in like i mean you'll you'll lose like septile the big whoop you, you lose to the one guy running septile but now like like iron valiant will outspeed non-adamant versions roaring moon well, outspeed those. Dark Ride's a good scarfer because it outspeeds everything. Um, you do still outspeed like key targets, um, but you're not like the greatest into Tusk. Still bad into Gliscor, but even more so because Gliscor is kind of everywhere. 
and um, you can't run out of it and outspeed everything, which is horrible, in my opinion. Um, so, like, it's it's usable, but I think it is usable on the same level as, like, Blaziken, right? You're running extra drill because you want to run extra drill, and it will do work because it is, at the end of the day, 405 attack, Pokemon with ground, steel typing, which is just generally good. It's got good enough bulk to always live, like, a neutral hit and um like a weaker super effective hit like it it kind of just chills on um aloe i think it's like 46 or like somewhere in the ballpark of 40 from scald um don't quote me on that I'm, i haven't used extra drill in forever but i mean i, I hope it's a good mondi in uh Yu -Yu, but it's just not good in um ou and on the same topic um actually i think tyranitar is a little bit better than extra drill because like there are reasons to run it with tyranitar right offensive special wall gets access to like knockoff rocks thunder wave it's kind of like diet clefable um because it can't like heal it's like weak to a lot of the the more popular mons but i think like tyranitar like will be consistent at least in the idea that like it'll beat certain mons but it, it's it's unfortunate because like it loses like goldango which is a special attacker like it used to be like the de facto like special wall like if you switch tyranitar into a special attack it will live but now it just doesn't um everything's gotten too strong a lot of things are like just i mean they, they, they just do too much damage um you, you still beat dragapult which is kind of nice you beat dark cry until it focus blasts and misses uh, but you don't even like oko um dark cry so it gets two chances to hit focus blast which you just don't want to give to your opponent i think like, having one chance to dodge Focus Blast is fine, like, um, I would never go for that, but if I, like, if I know that I live, like, a, a Tyranitar hit, I'm just gonna stay into Focus Blast twice, because the odds say that I hit at least one Focus Blast. Um, so yeah. On to Pheasantipity, and this is why I created the F tier, this is why I freed it up. It is technically viable in the sense that it has a very high special defense, it is a fairy type, it is a poison type, so it can't be like poison, it can absorb toxic spikes, so you can use it. It has pivoting options, again, it has like toxic, has fairy stab. It beats Iron Val, every single set of Iron Val, um, which is cool, but not good, because generally, if you're going to be Iron Val, you want to do it with a Mon that isn't horrifically dog shit into every other Pokemon. Which is not Pheasantipity. However, technically it's viable. Technically it's usable. Um, it's it can run beat up with Toxic Chain, and you can get, you know, guaranteed poisons. But at that point, why don't you just run Toxic? Because sometimes you just won't get the beat up Toxic Chain, and that's gonna really suck. <laughs> so yeah, um, Garchomp, and it hurts. It really hurts because I just I love Garchomp. Garchomp is like, for me top top three easily and if like <sighs> yeah oh i have like an itch on my back if a metagross didn't exist and tyranitar didn't exist Ty uh, garchop would be number one but like big whoop you're worse than two of the coolest pokemon in history right but it hurts and i i think i think garchomp is like mediocre it's just not good it doesn't do anything special i mean like it's it's always gonna lose to like corviknight and enamorous and if you're in the terra fire set then you're just destroyed by great tusk i tried to use like terra electric and it was okay but it wasn't incredible you have to lower your defense to like get a speed boost which like on Kiram a bulkier mon is fine but like if you lower your defense like even a stage then you run the risk of dying to King Gambit which just isn't great doesn't have Dragon Dance which really sucks I think a Dragon Dance in Garchomp would be like a, a, a very solid B tier with arguments for A tier but it doesn't have Dragon Dance it, it just can't like Flygon can Dragon Dance Let, let's look at the Pokemon with Dragon Dance real quick Let's do a little R and D. Um, Tyranitar has been dragon dancing forever. Why? Why is it a fucking Crawdont? Crawdont is not a dragon. It is a crab. 
how is it dragon dancing? For alligator is a is a is an alligator. Necrozma is whatever the fuck it is. These are not dragons. Scrafty is not a fucking dragon. Scrafty is a hoodlum. Is that is that bad? I actually I apologize. I might I might actually like cut that out. I'm gonna look up like online if that's bad because I I actually do not know. So I apologize. Whiskat. Motherfucking Whiskash gets the perfect, the the absolute perfect Garchomp set, and you're telling me that you're telling me like this is a Whiskash set and not a Garchomp set. Are you serious? It's just so frustrating. Garchomp would like give him Dragon Dance. You give, like. Motherfucker, we're at the point where, like, you run an item and you get a choice scarf. Instantly. We're at the point where, like, the, the, your idea of balance is a ghost fairy type with 130 speed, 130 special attack, and 130 defense. Just to top it all off. Just give Garchomp Dragon Dance already. It's not, it's not gonna be, like, insane. It might be insane, but it deserves it. He has been waiting too long. To boost his speed and special attack in the same turn. Or er, speed and special attack. Speed and attack, sorry. Um, I think Chain Chomp is pretty okay. Its spike set is... I mean, it's alright. I, I will run it on a team. So I guess for that, I'll put it in, in C tier. Um, because I will, like, I have written, like, Chain Chomp. Um, which I'm pretty sure... Hang on, let me just... Let me just check. That Chain Chomp is... It's... Mixed Hazard set. Tank Chomp? Is that it? Um, no, no. I. What is, what is Chain Chomp? This is like a set that I, I do run on spit on given teams. I don't know if I have any teams like loaded right now, but I, there are teams that I have. Chain Chomp. Let me see. No, okay. Instantly. Instantly proved to be a big liar. I have no loaded teams with Garchomp, but I do have teams on like my laptop that I just like go on to team build, um, where I where I like use Garchomp and they're fairly consistent. I I think laddering like in between classes, I've gotten to like um, 1700s using like Chain Chomp and I can consistently win with those teams. But they're like sweatier teams, so I'd probably never use them on here unless I'm going for like a laddering session. Um, Next we have Garganacle, and I think Garganacle has fallen off. It's still good. It, like, Salt Cure is still the most, one of the most broken moves in the game. It will get up rocks, it will chip everything away, it will Salt Cure. But, like, there's a lot of things running sub right now. There's a lot of things that can, like, just Oko it straight up. Or, like, 2 a KO it. Still has the problem where it just gets owned by Trick, because, like... Garg does not want to be, like, locked into one move. You could, like, get away with, like, Slow King being locked into an attack. Because Slow King can and often does just switch in and click, like, um, Chili Reception. But Garg, like, taking spikes and rocks, you want to, like, recover. And then the opponent switch into a mod that's, like, already advantageous. And it's just going to get so much done. And, like, in this meta, I think that, like... Garg using a whole turn to get 12% chip off is not that... It's not insane anymore. Because, like, generally, like, stall teams... Like, I think stall gets its back broken by Garg, but, like, just like just run Covert Cloak, right? But, um... Like, for example... Um... Let me, let me just see Oman. Like, if you, you saw here under a Dragapult, it's fine. 12%, 24%. 36% even is not the difference between Dragapult winning or losing because it's just it's just good. Um Raging Bolt does not mine the Salt Cure because that's leftovers can offset that damage a little bit. And then has two calm mind boosts up and then and then what? You're 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 dead. You're you you've lost. You win the Raging Bolt too much like room. Which is like the problem with Garg. It's it's terrible into offense, in my opinion. It's still good mon. But like I haven't used Gargan forever. 
um, like I've never like had a team that I'm like, man, I I'm missing one one key piece. What could ever could it be? And I slap Garganacle. Um, let me actually see where it falls on usage. Yeah, 26, which isn't great. But I feel like I see like Tinkaton more than Garg. This is I guess this is like weighted. Like I see Brian Crown a lot. I think Brian Crown is a very good mon. We're about to get to him, I think. No, we are not. I am lying. How long has this been going for? 14 minutes. Okay, let me kind of pick up the pace. Goldango does, like, Goldango things. However, I think keeping hazards up is a little bit less valuable. Because nothing is running rapid spin. But it still puts such a constraint on the metagame. Like, you don't run spin because of Goldango. Because you, you think that it's going to be, like, a waste of a slot. That's why Landers is so is so good you're or not not so like not the, the only reason but it's one of the reasons landers is so good because it's not constrained by like defog you, you, when you run landers you know that you're gonna if you want to uh, prevent hazards you have to taunt and then you just earth power you can get up your own hazards well, like with landers you you anticipate that the team will never get hazards off when when like on, on the other side when you run tusk you kind of build the team around the idea that you can get hazards off, which can be detrimental at times. However, Goldengo still puts like an insane constraint on the metagame. I think I think Goldengo is broken from a fundamental standpoint. It can do so much, has the balloon set, has a spec set, scarf set, can run defensive leftovers, can run um, offensive. It, it can just do too much. And especially with Terra, like you can never attack into Goldengo safely because um if you attack into it in the terras then general like the tusk goldango interaction for example you attack into it goldango with headlong rush to kill a goldango or knock off to break its balloon or whatever you you don't kill it terras into a fairy type terras terras into a i think worst case is that it terras into a fairy type best case it becomes immune because if you hit it and lower your defenses, you just die to make it rain. And that that's never fun. Um, and then even in just being on the team, like, always puts you into a do I, don't I situation with um, clicking rapid spin. You just never want to click it because you don't want to give a Goldango a free turn. You don't, you don't want to give a, a, a Balloon Goldango free, free rain or whatever. It essentially, like, its Balloon set just in instantly demolishes Gliscor, instantly demolishes Claude Zire. It, it just it just beats. Like Goldango can beat everybody. Um, I don't know if it gets called mine, but it doesn't like really need it. You just run Nasty Plot, make it rain and sweep the entire squad. Um Glamora I think is the best hazard lead in the game. And considering that Gen 9 is like one of like a, a good playstyle is hyper offense, I think Lamora can go into A tier solidly i think it is the best hazard lead because it, it will always get up something you can get, keep hazards off with it you can get up like just a layer of rocks get just a layer of t spikes it's constraining on the lead because it is really hard especially in a metagame so physical to hit lamora safely and keep toxic spikes off so if you don't have like a poison type your mods will be whittled down um I mean, granted, most teams, like, run a poison type because it is not hard to slot a poison type just because of how good some of them are, like Claude and Slow King G. Or Iron Moth and more offensive squads. And then there's some other, like, shittier poison types that you can run. You can, like, Terra Poison. Um, King Gambit's obviously immune. You run, like, Heavy Duty Boots, Sun Mons. But, like, still, Glamora can, like... I think Mons is, like, a game where, like, the more information you have the better because if you have information you're not playing like in the dark and so having like toxic spikes up and rocks up to just like let you know if your opponent is, is boots or not is so helpful it's it's so underrated and the fact that like it pairs so well with goldango to just keep the hazards up it's it's great it's awesome um glyscore i think is one of the more broken i think glyscore is s tier um infinite recovery has access to every move it could ever want both all three hazards rocks spikes toxic spikes earthquake knockoff has u-turn has toxic it can and it will soak up every hit you can run terra water and now that um um curum is gone yeah yeah no glycore is broken glycore is insane now 
um, because now it's not stuck in like the freeze dry thing where like if you Terra you lose if you take the hit you die if you switch out you run you run the risk of getting frozen like with that gone I think Gliscor like invest now Gliscor stocks are up um, I'm pretty sure like didn't even make top 10 did it yet yeah, 14 just because I think that's just because of Kira because why would I run like the Mon that gets pwned by Kiram when I can run like Landers that at the very least can taunt that thing. Or Earth Power and get like a lot of damage off. Um, Hisu and Gujra, I do not know why Hisu and Gujra is here. I'll put it in D tier because it's not the worst thing you can run. Dragon Steel is like solid. Um, the AV set is a little bit worse. I think if you're gonna run Gujra, just run Boots and and say that you're gonna take like no. No, Isu and Gujra just isn't good. Like, it will get cheese wins off, but, like, any of the other special walls will get more things done. Like, I'd rather run Blissey over Isu and Gudra. If I'm going to run a slow attacker, I'm going to run, like, um, let me just look at, like, the, the list currently. Like, I think, I think Rotom Wash is a better slow attacker. I think Ting Lu is a better slow attacker. Skeledurge, um, all of those are just, like, better to me. Um, Yajing Fire is banned, however, like, during its reign, I think it's, it's like a, I mean, I mean, all of the banned mons are S tier, be, because obviously, um, Kiram, because it, like, you literally, like, the fact that it has, um, 130 in both offenses, access to Terra, access to, like, incredible coverage, um, Freeze Dry, Icicle Spear, Scale Shot, it just picks and chooses what it loses to, and you just kind of have to deal with that. Um, might have to cut that out. I apologize. Um, had to uh, uh, fix something. Um, on to Great Tusk and what what needs to be said. However, I think like because there's so many replacements, like Great Tusk is S tier, but like I think it's like the bottom of S tier. I think I'm gonna put Landorus like preemptively. I'm just gonna put Landorus top of A tier. I think I think Tusk and Landers are like the same same level, so I'll put them here. I think I think all of the defensive ground. No, no Glyce Gly is gonna pop off. Um these two are like they, they fill the same kind of role, defensive ground. Just kind of do it in a different uh, different way. Um Great Tusk compresses like so many roles into one. Um Landers kind of just does one thing. It's faster than Tusk, which is huge. Like faster than one than 106 is insane. Access to Taunt kind of shuts down like I really enjoy Taunt Landers. I think it is better than Great Tusk um, for like what it is because it beats like Corviknight, right? Um, like if you have Helmet, Corviknight's gonna body press into you. Take you're gonna take nothing from it. You're gonna deal 16. Corviknight can't like um, roost off that damage. If it U-turns on you, it's still gonna take like a lot of damage. Still has to take like hazards whenever it switches back in. Um, you can pressure like Earth Power consistently. It's it's very good. And Great Tusk like. I mean, it, it runs, it can run a sweeper set, um, an attacker set, it can run defensive, boost. I think, I think, like, you'll generally see a trend where, like, the more versatile mons, um, fall higher in the tier list. Just because they do so much. Um, like, I mean, that that's just how usage-based tiering works, right? The mons that can do more will be higher than the mons that do less. Um, Greninja, I think, is a phenomenal late-game cleaner. Um, I'm surprised it's not an overused like every time i like face it i'm just like wow greninja is strong um i think it's the same level as an amorous it can snowball very quickly however it kind of gets owned by like water absorb claude Zire, blissey clefable's pretty good into it a little mole you're never bringing through that um raging bolt kind of sits on it as well um but it's like solid uh grim snow i think screens have kind of died down if i'm gonna run a screens button i'm just gonna run uh lola nine tails and just say if i run to a steel type or a fire type i'm just gonna take the l um like both of these mons get kind of owned by cinderace anyways so like the fact that grim strong doesn't get o code it doesn't really matter it's just gonna core change your screens anyways and you just have to take like l so i'll put it in like d tier you can run worse mons and it does still have a role and while we're at it i'll put alola nine tails in like c tier i think veil vale is a little bit worse of a play style i'll put garg at like the top um i, I think i think nine tails is the more viable of the c tier mods because you can run like nine tails 
hyper offense. I will run it over certain months at times. However, if I'm gonna run hyper offense, generally like Glamora is better because the thing with the level nine tails is yeah, you can just run a hyper offense team, but like you're foregoing hazard. So like any sash mons are like generally just bulky mons that won't die in one hit to anything. Um, at least not with hazard, hazard's chip. Um, now we're not taking the hazard's chip. So I think it was really good when Kiram wasn't was like in the tier because you know you have a Kiram plus like what is it plus plus two plus three defense, but now you just don't have Kiram, so it's kind of kind of mid. Um, Hatterene I think is a solid anti lead mon, um, solid mid game, has access to like Calm Mind, um, Draining Kiss, has Nuzzle. Um, Custap is pretty good on it because you can run, you can like make sure that you'll always get like two attacks off, which usually means like Trick Room and a Healing Wish, or Nuzzle and a Healing Wish, Psychic, two Psychics even. Um, I keep forgetting how like insane this thing's stats are, besides its HP, right? Like, this is insane. 95, 136, 103 is like damn near close to Lunala. Ignoring the HP stat. Like, if, if the attack and HP were, like, swapped, this mon would be broken. Psychic Fairy is really good because, um, well, while Psychic isn't phenomenal, they're both walled by Steel. It has, like, access to, like, a Mystical Fire, which will do a reasonable chip to anything that's, like, not, like, Corviknight. Um, and Fairy, Fairy, um, is walled by Poison, so Psychic can help you, like, beat the Poison types. You're pretty good into Claude's Iron. Pretty good into Iron Val. Um... Not necessarily like King Gambit, but you can like nuzzle that thing and get like some form of progress, I guess. Um, Halucha, I think Halucha is having a kind of, a, not a huge resurgence, but it's like, it's pretty good. Um, the Encore set is like, I think it's most consistent set. It has access to like base 110 power um, stabs, which makes it like, it's attack to set, feel like deceptively high. Like it does too much damage for a mom with 92 base attack. Um, I think it is, um, it's, it's, I, I, I would use it over Blissey. I could see a team where it's like, there's grassy terrain offense, and then you utilize, um, Halucha as a late game cleaner, and that just being, like, a good team. Um, for example, I have a, I have a team utilizing, like, Ogre Pond, Cornerstone, and, um, like, Iron Moth, and I think Valiant's on that team, too, with King Gambit. But I could see myself replacing the Ogre Pond Cornerstone with a, with a Halucha and getting like similar, if not like even better results. And if the results are worse, it might just, it, like, it's, just, I mean, it'll be because like I'm using two mid tier mons, so like, nah. And while, while we're at it, um, actually, no, I'll, I'll make the Ogre, Ogre Pond's in like the same little row, I guess. Um, but like Halucha is like just a good sweeper. Um, it doesn't run into the same problem as, um, um, Excursal does because it has such a high base speed to begin with at plus or at um, times two speed it will just be outspeeding every Pokemon which is pretty good for it um, Heatran I think is um, one of the better special walls it did um, drop to Yu but I don't think that's because of like its own failures I think that's just because people just aren't using Heatran um, I think it is a little bit worse than these two because they have recovery but generally like Heatran will will always wall like fairy types, it's good into Val. Um it, it, it it'll it'll always live like any neutral hit, which because it's I mean it's Heatran, right? Um it'll live like fighting type attacks as well. Um a lot of attacks like aimed at it. And it'll it'll get up hazards, it can magma storm and trap a mon, and then earth power, taunt, um run like a more offensive leading set, however I I don't know. I think like speed is very important, so like being faster than like timid raging bolt but after that like i wouldn't run just bulk or offense um it's good into um brian crown it's good into dark cry like those things are never like generally breaking through you even if they hit a like a uh, focus blast it's not just it's just not doing a lot because you're you're heat trying right it it beats iron moth which is like a scary sweeper um can probably beat a roaring moon with air balloon um another thing like air balloon set is pretty good because you stay off of like um, spikes in your neutral dub rocks, which is fine. Um, you would prefer to be like resistant, but I think like for how many resistances it, resistances it has, it'll never be an awful one. Um, like again, did fall to UU, but like I I think it's fine. Um, it's not like too tell like I guess like I can see it being C tier, but like 
I mean, fucking Greninja is here, so it's not like the OU club. Um, Poop Unbound is top of mid tier. Weak to U-turn gets O code, but it will it will generate like O code things. Um, same little concept as um, Kiram, however, it's still like offensively beaten by whatever, um, where you get just owned um, by any physical attacks, but you can run like um, a special version or you can run a fi uh, physical version as a hundred base power stab dark um which seems insane until you realize that knockoff is like three three base power off of that so it's like kind of like i mean like for me personally i sometimes i just run knockoff because the item removal is pretty insane or like since it doesn't have like the greatest like um four moves in the world like it doesn't have does who want to have u-turn i am unfamiliar um, I don't think it does. It, is, it does not. I usually run like Zen Headbutt sometimes. Um, Hyperspace. And then like, I really don't know what to run in the filler slots. So sometimes I'll run like, like knockoff and then like whatever elemental punch the team needs. And I'll call that a Hoopa set. Or like some, oftentimes the knockoff might just be like trick. Or I won't even run the elemental punch. And I'll just run like... Let's just run this and call it a Hoopa set. Um, just because knockoff is so good. Um, which, like, knockoff makes it good into bulky, which you wouldn't think of, like, a, a choice one. I mean, it, it, like, it has very high offenses, so it, it's really hard to be bad. Um, the, the 680 BST shitmon in UU um, sucks to suck, I guess. Um, but yeah, like, I thought this thing would be insane with Terra, like, no longer being weak to U turn. But like you, you turn off a U-turn weakness and then proceed to die to every physical attack in the game, right? Like Dragapult just blows you up. King Gambit will blow you up. I mean, even like defensive Mons do way too much to you, and you just don't kill them in return. Um, Great Tusk will kill you instantly. It's, it's like, if it were to like choose one like stat to be high, like if this, if it just had like. <laughs> If Hoopa had like insane speed, this thing would be like an Ubersmon, but obviously it doesn't, so it's not an Ubersmon. If like, I don't know, if its special attack was like split up, it had 70 points in special attack, got up to like, I don't know, what what's like a what's like an okay speed tier, like like um base like 110 or like 111, and then the rest in HP this thing would be broken or if this thing if i think if this thing had like enough speed to outspeed like tusk this thing would be insane but currently as it stands like you kind of want to run adamant because like the damage is enticing but if you run adamant then you just like you're, you're just like not fast enough you're you're slower than than rillaboom you can't have that so then you run you run jolly and then like it's just like, why why would I run this when I, I could run a Dragapult with um, Jolly, run Dragon Dart, and do just as good, if not better. More consistent, good defensive typing, doesn't have the, the shit psychic typing attached to it, instead it has the swag, Ghost Dragon, best offensive duo, best offensive types. And then Darkrai kind of just mixes like a good offensive type with a bad type in general. Right, I think if you're gonna like have a dual type, the the both both types like obviously need to provide something, and it just doesn't. It's not bulky enough to where like the psychic resistances are like too impactful, right? Like in the case of Iron Crown, you want psychic to be resistant to like fighting and re um um a future sight resistance is important. Um, a uh, resistance to um uh what is it? Stored power is nice as well. But like, I mean, who dark types are already like immune to that, and so why why psychic, right? Like, psychic stab doesn't help you with what you're struggling against. So, which is why I just like say I'm gonna I'm gonna take the elegance to fighting types, and I'm just gonna be good into everything except or not fighting. Sorry, um, dark types, and I'm just, I'm just gonna be bad into everything else. Um, Hydrapple. It's, it's a good Assault Vest mod, like good Regen Vest. Um, 
but it's not like the greatest. It, it loses to like a lot of common things. Although like with Terra, it kind of shores that up. So I think it, I think like, I would run it over Tyranitar, I think. Um, no, I, they, they kind of do the same thing. I'll put it at the top of D tier, but just, just know like, uh, uh, y'all, I, I'll, I'll keep Tyranitar in C tier because I, I still like do run it seriously. I'm um, just not like too often. Like Assault Vest Detar is good, I think. Assault Vest Hydrapple is kind of niche, just because of the the added grass typing. I remember people like really hoping that this would be a our first Dragon Bug type, and then sad that it wasn't. And I'm like, guys, guys, the Q Apple guy has a chance to be good. Like, look at dude, look at how Apple Ton. Oh my God, dude, he's he is so cute. He has like a little apple on his head, and he's just a sleepy, eepy guy. Like, don't you want his cousin to be good? Stop cursing this thing. Don't make it Dragon Bug. Dragon Bug is, like, the shit, the shittiest typing ever. I hope that we never get a Dragon Bug just because, like, if we get a Dragon Bug, it will obviously be, like, disappointing unless it has, like, a bug type attack that's good into fairy types. And then you're still walled by steel types. So it's like, what the fuck? Um, yeah. Indeedy is the niche of niche. I'll put it at the top of F tier, but, like, it enables Psy Spam, but Psy Spam isn't good because, like, look at the top tier. Look at how many dark types and psychic resistances we have. Like, King Gambit is number one, Goldengo is broken, Dark Cry is num- like, not number one, but it's very good. Core of Night just walls you and beats, like, if you have, like, um, Focus Blast, it just ignores that. Heatran will sit on you forever. Even Clodsire. Um, doesn't even need to Terra, and it will just, like, live in Expanding Force. So, like, I, I just would never run Indeedee for a serious reason, unless I'm trying to just run Psy Spam and just have fun trolling the ladder. Um, Brian Crown is, like, same-ish level as Blaziken. I think it's a little bit better, but it's not good. Um, it, it has the same problem. Um, I played Black and White, um, overused before Black and White 2 came out, and Q um, Terrakion was everywhere. It was, like, the greatest mod ever before Landorus came out. And the reason that I think Iron Crown felt insane was because it was used before people registered that Landorus was a great mod. Like, that its fundamentals were just so good. Um, it, it, I think it, like, it will beat, like, Lyscore, obviously. Um, because Gliscor is just, like, less physically bulky than Landorus because of Intimidate. But, like, it still struggled in the Gliscor. You have to run Terra Fighting, otherwise, I think, like, if you don't run Terra Fighting, you just lose to King Gambit instantly. And, like, Terra, you'd run Terra Flying if you want to, like, be good into Great Tusk. However, I think being bad into Tusk, like, mediocre still into Tusk, and phenomenal into King Gambit or not phenomenal even like you're still like like its defense is not insane it's not good I don't think I think it's like fairly bad right that's not bad but it's not like you're not living King Gambit then you take like 50 or like I think you take like 40 which isn't like awful but I mean it's typing like at base is weak to um Rillaboom and King Gambit which I go back to them for priority, but like they, they are, I think Rillaboom and King Gambit are like the baseline. If you're weak to one, you can't be weak to the other, or you have to be like resistant to the other. Otherwise you're just, you know, kind of getting trolled the entire time by those two. They will, they will come in, hit the gritty and just destroy you. Um, and just Sucker Punch in general is just always going to be good. So I think being weak to Sucker Punch is auto points against you. Um, but anyways, like, you're at minus one, you're doing nothing to Landorus, has Rocky Helmet, um, it's gonna get up rocks, it's gonna earth power you to death, or earth power, like, get up rocks, and then you're gonna Rocky Helmet chip yourself into range of King Gambit Sucker Punch, or, um, Rillaboom Grassy Glide, or really whatever. If you're ever forced out with, um, uh, Iron Boulder, forget about it. If you do not have the speed boost, you're just, you're just... Your your dog dicks, and um, does it have to run a? I don't think it has to run a minus speed. No, it does not. Okay, I was I was about to say like if this thing has to run like minus speed to um get the the speed boost, then it's just like incredibly shit. But it doesn't have to, which is not bad. But like, I mean, is it? I don't think it's outsped by um 
I think it is one of the faster mons. Which is is nice, I guess. No, you're you're still sped by the scarf dark cry. So so good luck. You're not breaking through Zamazenta either, which is I think a broken mon. So what are you doing? And the more I look at it, like, it doesn't beat any, like, it, it just loses. So I'm gonna put it, like, below these. Because I would run all of these on a serious team before I even touch Brian Crown. Or, not a Brian Crown, sorry, sorry. Don't, don't let me stay in the name. Um, Iron Boulder, Iron Fraud. Now we have Brian Crown, um, good spit F wall. It will always wall spit F special defensively. Um, it's good, like, anti-lead into, like, Rabombi. However, I think being good into Rabombi is less valuable now because Rabombi is generally just worse because everyone runs boots and Rabombi, like, is, like, mid as a, as a, like, a mon. Um, but I'll put it, like, I think Iron Crown is an A-tier mon. It, it can run, like, a sweeper or a bulky set. And, like, while they do have, like, the same-ish checks, it has a nice thing of having stab side shock, which means that it will always beat um, Claude's Ire and Blissey. And being bulky enough to where, like, missing a focus blessing against Heatran is not life or death, right? Um, it can run Volt Switch, Future Sight, has Tachyon Cutter, which is just a strong attack, deceptively strong as well. I, I just keep forgetting that thing has, like, base 122 attack, or special attack, and with a base 100 power um, stab move. I just keep forgetting that. And you can run Terra Steel, like, as a defensive option, but also as an offensive option, which is very, very cool. Um, beats Glamora, which is points to it. It'll not beat, but it won't, like, lose to Corviknight. If you're the Call Mindset, you just kind of sit on it. You sit on all the defensive walls. You can run, like, with the right coverage move. I think that you can just, like, brute force through everything. Run Booster Special Attack, Booster Speed. All right, I do think Booster um, Special Attack is just generally better because they're not sacrificing offense. With Booster Special... Booster? Special attack, sorry. You can just beat Don Dozo, beat Claude's Ire, beat basically everyone. All of your checks, and then, like, the offensive mons kind of, like, lose to Terra Fairy. Like, everyone barring Goldango, like, is, like, bad. And even then, Goldango just kind of has to make the read. Because if you make it rain into a non-Terra, you're boned forever. If, you, if it has a plus, like, Iron Crown has a plus one, it can afford to, like, make the risk, like... The 50-50 is more like a like a 75-25 because it's kind of just whatever the Iron Crown user wants to do. If they want to save their Terra, they don't have to Terra. They, they will live the Shadow Ball. If they want to Terra and they don't need the Terra, then they Terra and they'll live the Make It Rain unless you're like Specs, which is not a common set. Um, but even then you don't have to. Like Using up the booster special attack is not the worst in like the cases of like the... Um, faster sweepers because you have the bulk to back yourself up um on to iron hands um it's pretty bad honestly like it will live hits it'll it'll get damage off it's high hp high attack mod but like nah uh, i think it's more d tier um iron moth is a good sweeper um i think it's a little bit less consistent than like these mods so i'll put in like i think it's better than hoop unbound worse than like, I think it's a little bit better than Deoxys. Um, but I think it is one of the, like, one of the more... One of the more mid of the fire types, really? Like, fire... Oh, yeah. No, it's kind of reliant on luck. Because if you don't get the fiery dance boost, then you're kind of hitting, like, wet noodle. And if you do, you're still not beating Claude's Ire. You're still not beating Mola, You're still not beating... Don't be Heatran. Don't be any of the special walls. You have you have zero tools into them. I guess, like, Terra is fine, but then you're running a slot for Terra Blast. And... Like, you don't kill Heatran with no boost. You just you just don't. Um, you don't kill Claude's Ire, and then you get Earthquake, take too much, and then King Gambit switches in, or any priority mon, any mon that's faster will switch in to kill you. Darkrai has Ice Beam, so yeah. Um, Iron Shreds kind of does the same thing as Great Tusk, however, I think a little bit worse. Um, it's a C tier mon. It will, like, if you need it, it will get its job done. Like, it's just a side, it's a downgrade to Tusk, but it's still like, I think like since it, it's a decent mod, I'll put it um I'll put it above Clefable. Um because like I mean it has Rabbit Spin, it has the same utility as Tusk plus a pivot move, um plus the, the ground steel, it's good. Iron Val is a solid A tier mod. I don't think too much needs to be said. Um a mixed sweeper with booster energy, just generally strong. 
um, access to Swords Dance, Knock Off, Close Combat, access to Calm Mind with Moonblast, um, Psyshock Shadow Ball has like insane supportive moves that like kind of, not supportive moves in the sense that like it supports the team, but like it supports itself so well. You can run um, Substitute and just kind of troll um, Garganackle, which I think is like one of the worst flex options to run just in general. You can run Destiny Bond to make sure that like it is so fucking fast, so generally it'll be the fastest thing. And then you just run Destiny Bond and die. Or, like, you don't have to die instantly. You can t um, kill them on and then have them switch to, like, their Dark Cry, Terra Poison, you Destiny Bond. And then, no matter what, like, if they Terra, um, you, like, you don't have to make the read anymore. Um, I think that um, the, uh, the Encore set is pretty good into, like, Gambit and Raging Bolt. You can force them to like play mind games and like if they lock Sucker Punch or if they kill like a mom with Sucker Punch, you just lock them into that and then you just start boosting up and sweep through them. Or if, if they start boosting up, you just Encore them and then if they Sucker Punch, try and avoid that, well, congratulations, you're now Encored in a Sucker Punch. I just won't attack you for the next eight turns. It's very good. It's very good. I think it is better than all of the Acer mods. However, like it does run into issues in the fact that like it's a mix set, just like, like it, it will never be like a Lola Mola. It has zero off. Like, I mean, actually it does. The more I think about it, the more I just think, damn, Iron Val is a fucking good ass mon. Um, I think it's, I think it's S tier, but it is slower than like Roaring Moon. So you always lose to that. Um, so than Scarf Darkrai, which is kind of points against it. But I mean, it's not like hugely insane. Um, if you Terra, you do lose to like King Gambit, Raging Bolt, but Again, like, I say this so much, but losing to, like, the best mod in the game, like, the two best mods in the game, like, is not terrible. You do beat Holt. Um, or, like, the number two, and or number, number two, number three, I, I will stand by it. I think Holt is the best mod in the game, and I think Goldango is fundamentally broken. I do not think Goldango is better than Dragapult, but I do think Goldango is fun, like, just, just broken. Um, if I were to put it on the tier list instead of just saying broken, I would pro I would put it in S tier. I would put it probably below Raging Bolt because Raging Bolt is like does get kind of owned by Team Lu, and in S tier because Gold Goldengo will just oh like it does this like it being on a team fundamentally just changes the way that you can play. Like you can never click Defog because why would you you can't let Goldengo in for free? That is a strong mom with a strong attack. Um, Latios and Latios. Um, Latios feels like a better Cresselia because it has access to Draining Kiss. Self sustain, don't have to run like Moonlight, which is can sometimes run into issues. Um, Terra Poison, I think, is it's. Or Terra Steel is probably a little bit better, but you can like inter interchange them because um, one is weak to cl Tusk Close Combat, the other is a Poison type, which just isn't the greatest. You're immune to ground, which is pretty okay. Um, I think it's like C tier has its roles. Um, I'll put it top of C tier. Um, Latios I think is worse. I'll put Latios in actually B tier because it, it does like, like it, it can snowball very easily with it's just call mine booster set because it will always live. So it can usually get um, a a uh, weakness policy off and it gets an, if it gets agility or call mind or uh, what what other like options does it get? Like, obviously, there's a reason why it's UUBL, but, like, Calm Mind Store Power and Agility. Yeah, this, I mean, this, this beats Bulky, this beats Offense. Um, does get kind of owned by, like, Ting Lu, but, I mean, Womp Womp, you lose to Ting Lu. You're a special attacker, welcome welcome to Gen 9. Um, does lose to, like, King Gambit if it doesn't get going, but, I mean, again, big whoop, you lose to King Gambit. Um, I think it's beats here. If it gets going, it will, it will like clean a game but i think it it's a little bit harder to get going than like the top of b tier but it's a lot easier to use than like the bottom of c tier and while we're at it i'm gonna move sarah ledge up to b tier as well it just feels like it should be there latios is c tier because like if i'm running a special attack and dragon type why don't i run dragapult and if i'm running a special attack here a special attacking like psychic type i just rather run iron crown like it it compresses the rolls okayly but like it doesn't have option like it i mean it has aura sphere but it doesn't have like 
like if I, I I'd run want to run specs with um um Latios is the is the thing, and if I'm running specs, then I'm kind of like owned by Gambit. I can trade like my choice specs, but that requires me sacking like a mod, and then like it's kind of scary having King Gambit like at with a boost. Like, it can Terra, and then it can still win. If you're Scarf, GG, you might have just like lost the game. Um, Dragapult can always Wisp it, so it has an option into that. Iron Crown can use Focus Blast and Terra Fairy and live. Or I think it like lives at base, not comfortably, but it will live in a pinch. And Drago or um, uh, Latios just won't. It's not good into like any. I mean, it's good into Clodsire, but beyond that, it's like owned by Heatran, owned by Alola Mola. Um, it's just not not like as good. Like it's just not consistent. It just, like, never will do what you want it to do consistently in the same way that any of the mods above it does. Which is kind of just, like, the big thing of OU, right? You can be a good mod, right? And you can have, like, powerful traits. Like, you can OCO the, the strongest walls in the game. But if you're not consistent with it, there's no point in running you. Because, yeah, you can do that, but sometimes you're just not going to do anything. Um, Manaphy and... When we had no idea how to deal with Manaphy, I think it was it was broken tier. It's it's take heart set just like kind of blew everything away. Take heart, I um acid armor with like terra poison or terra steel, scald and draining kiss or I don't know if it gets draining kiss, but like I mean take heart was already just like good. You actually don't you don't even have to run terra steel because take heart heals static conditions. Um before that it was broken. Like, I think, I think Manaphy was one of the mods that, like, I, I felt like Manaphy had to get banned. But as we, like, figured out how to deal with it, right, like, hit it with strong moves and it can't heal it off. Raging Bolt beats it. King Gambit will beat it. You have taunt options on a lot of mods. Um, to Toxic it. And Toxic won't beat it, but, you know. Um, then it kind of whittled down. Now it's an RUBL, which isn't great. Um, I think it's better than the C tier mods. Um, also, side note, Garg will be moved up because it's, it is, it's good at what it, it's like, okay, but not phenomenal. Um, I think it's like top of C tier. I think it has like the potential to run away with games like the best, but like, it's still kind of pwned. Like if you're water absorbed clods are, you kind of just laugh in its face. You just, there's nothing to be done. You will still always lose to Raging Bolt, I think. Um, like, Ice Beam's okay into it, but it just runs Terra Electric. And if you're Terra Grass, it'll just kill you with, with Dragon Pulse. Dark Card can trick you, or just do a lot of damage. And just, like, 100-100, when not invested in, just isn't the greatest. And if you're not at max speed, then you're outspent by, like, Landorus and Tusk and everyone else, which will just get so much chip off into you. And kind of own you it's good on screens i think because that kind of like shores up its problem but yeah um mouse hold i think has fallen off recently just because of um like the amount of helmet running around you will die into corviknight um i'll put it in, in f tier it's not good i don't think like it'll ever get anything done it can like remove hazards so maybe i'll put it in, like d tier it's it's a, like it's good with like removing hazards and like if they don't have a corviknight then you can attack but if they have Corviknight, if they have a ghost type, if they have Landorus, and you attack, then you're dead. Right. Kind of thing. Um, Yaskarada, I think, is one of the more, the most consistent Choice Scarf users, one of the most consistent um, Boots users. It's good, it can run a lot of items, but it will always do the same general thing. Um, faster than a lot of things. Protean U-turns hit really hard. Protean knockoffs kind of shore up its poor grass typing. Allowing to like live hits and get like two hits off. Crunch triple axle to kind of blow through like Landorus and Great Tusk. Um, I'll put it in B tier, like very top of B tier. I think it is the best B tier mod. Moltres has had a resurgence. I think a lot of the OU fire types, because of like how good fairy is, how good like steel types are, like sh like are gonna be like C tier higher. I think Moltres is it's really good into a lot of the um the more offensive physical attackers because it'll get in like plate or er, not again, but Flame Body is really good. It's off the ground, so it's not weak to like spikes, not weak to earthquake, strong fire attack. Like it has the same special attack as Zapdos, which like 
hits it like anytime I attack with Zapdos, I feel like I'm gonna ride on. So I'll put it like above Heatran. I think it I think it's as like I think all the, the OU fire types are probably like as good as each other. Now onto the Ogre Pond forms. How long has this been going for? Hour and twenty, not, not terrible. Um Ogre Pond Wellspring I think is broken. Um You can mix and match like it's EVs. I've been running a max HP, max attack with like a minimal speed and it lives every single hit. It, it, it okos everything because you're adamant, you can tear a water, it gets a free, it gets a free um, expert belt boost without having to like meet the condition. So essentially, just like the best way that I can think about it is like Overpon's holding a life orb. And Amon with, with these stats, with a hundred base power water stab access to like insane grass moves you can run horn leech or you can run like power whip if you're with rillaboom you can run like grassy glide and shore up like the low speed you can run trailblaze you can run wood hammer if you don't like missing like it just has so many good grass stabs which on their own isn't the greatest but the best water type checks are generally like just like water types in general and it's immune to water so they're they already like don't want to switch and you have free entry points and they're weak to your secondary stat dragapult like dragons don't want to like switch into your water type attacks you're they're gonna take too much damage they only do it like once or twice and then like later game if you're up against like an, an iron valiant for example you can just tear a water get a spadef boost and then no matter what the draco the um sorry the uh, iron valiant does it will it will lose if it uh, switches out, it loses its booster energy, so it, 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 which means that it's like generally a worse mon. Um, and if it stays in, it's not going to kill you, and then you just kill it in return. It's good mid game, it's good early game, beats like all of the, the premier like physical walls. Corviknight's not the greatest, but it's still good into it. Kind of force it to Terra, otherwise it's going to take too much damage from U-turn. Um, great tech to like Greninja... Um, in certain scenarios, enamorous and others not so much. Um, great check to like Hatterene, even. Like every single mon, I think, in B tier or lower, just it, it is a great check to. And even like A tier, I think, up until like Iron, I think Iron Crown and below, like every mon below is a great check to. There's probably like one or two, like it's like not the it's it's bad into Mas Mascarada, but like I mean the water type loses to the grass type insane um another thing like that's so good about um ogre pond is the fact that like yes it is forced to tear our water so it is pretty terrible into raging bull but like you just run play rough and then you're good into raging bull or you can run knockoff and be good into dragapult and just the general metagame if you want to ensure that you never lose to like king gambit you can run superpower or stomping tantrum so if you hit like I don't know. Um, you, you hit like Power Whip into. This is something that I've actually been really enjoying lately. Um, power Whip plus Stomping Tantrum. So if you miss Power Whip into Raging Bolt, miss your like big chip damage. Um, I wrote it on um, like a grassy terrain team. So if if you hit Wood Hammer, you're doing half to Raging Bolt anyways. But if you miss Wood Hammer, you have a 150 base power um, ground type attack that's hitting it into an um, another. Sorry, I have the worst stutter ever. Shout out autism. Shout out my brain. Um, you have a 150 base power electric type attack hitting in, or 150 base power ground type attack hitting into an electric type, which will just do so much damage. And it doesn't kill, but it chips it enough to where like it will not switch into another like IV cudgel. Like the raging ball is neutered for the entire game. Um, Another nice thing about Ivy Cudgel is that it's not a contact attack. Which means you don't have to worry about helmet from Corviknight, no flame body or static or anything like that. High crit ratio, which means the hacks are on your side. Which means that if you get to attack with the mob that can attack a lot, then you're gonna crit and you're just gonna break through your counters by pure luck. Um, Okapon Grass, I think, is it's C tier. It, it can run away with games, but like weak to king gambit always has a terror grass not the greatest into raging bolt because um like grass types you don't have to switch in raging bolt you don't feel pressure to 
because you can just switch in like Iron Crown or Corviknight, and then they have to knock off you. And they take you take um, Helmet Chip. Um, it's good to Landorus because it has like Defiant, and then like plus one plus one free Dragon Dance and Butera with a 100 base power like Grass type attack. I think that's the biggest detriment. The fact that its stab is Grass type forcibly. Like if this was any other type, I think this thing would like solidly be a top of A tier, if not S tier. But it's, it's forced to be grass type, which just isn't the greatest. You're never being Moltres either. You're doing like nothing with like knockoff, and you're getting burned and then just dying to flamethrower. Um, a little hard to run its item because like, I, like I feel myself wanting to run so many different items. Like I want to run like boots to avoid like toxic spikes and stealth rocks and spikes so I, so I can, like stay around. I feel myself wanting to run like sash so I can like make sure that I can get like an SD off, life orb, and it's just like no matter what item you run, it's kind of different from like King Gambit or Dragapult in the sense that like no matter what item you run, the Pokemon will still be good. It feels like no matter what item I use on Ogre Pond, it's just lacking always. Which I guess is like a C tier, like definition of C tier, more so D tier. Um, now to Cornerstone, I think it's like a, it's a good. Ha um, Spikes lead, it has a stab rock move, never miss. I'll put it in C tier. Um, just below like Manaphy and Latios. It has a good speed tier, good attack stat. Um, will always get up spikes generally. Um, can beat like Hatterene with his rock type attacks. Can just do a lot of damage, crit rock move is pretty good, turns out. <clears throat> um, Ogie Dogie is one of the worst physical attackers in the game. Um, in OU, I guess. It's okay in the landers, but like, you get a plus one, but you still kind of lose to it. Like, you can just get earth powered into oblivion. You can expend your Terra, but then you get kind of owned by Raging Bolt. Um, still not good, like, it's okay spadef wise, but like, with Assault Vest, I guess. But then you can't, like, boost your stats, you're kind of limited on, like, the moves that you can run. And like, if I want to run a physical attacker in OU, there, there's so many other good mons that will always get something done. Because Okie Doki, like, its whole trait is that it will, like, like if, like, Landorus can't switch into it, right? You can't use your ground type to beat the poison type. But you can still use Landorus to beat, like, Okie Doki. You don't want to, like, spend your Terra generally on, like, like, a mon that will only beat Landorus, I guess? Because you Terra Water, oh, awesome. I'm going into my Miascarada now. I'm going into my Rillaboom or my Raging Bolt or I mean even Iron Crown like can beat it. Not like I think Earthquake is like a move that you should run, but you know. Or I just go into one of my like more consistent mons, tear into a water type, and you're just not beating me. Because you just don't have moves to hit like a consistent water type with. Um I think it's forced to run Ice Punch and then like its moveset is kind of like it's moveset is kind of like preset for it. Um, like I think I think these three moves are like necessary. And then like what else do you run? Like you can run like like the assault vest. Set. Like like I said, they're, they're pretty necessary. Like the vest is okay. Like it is good defensively, but it just doesn't hit that hard. It loses the Corviknight no matter what. Um, if it's bulk up. Like Iron Valor is just gonna switch in, hit the hit the nut on you. Um, you still do lose the Goldango. If you're on the bulk upset, like the standard bulk upset, I guess you can run like a poison type attack, but like which one of these moves is beating Goldango? Like realistically. Like Goldango switches in, clicks Thunder Wave, and then hexes you to death. Or Dragapult switches in and wisps you, takes like, I don't know, 60 from knockoff. And then just proceeds the dragon darts, chip you down, and then you just lost your Okie Dogie. It's just not great. I'll put it in D tier. It, it will get more done, I think, than like these mons because it's not terrible into um, Landorus. Um, Poison Puppeteer, I think, same general. Like, it's good physically, defensively, but like not really because it's weak to all of the common physical attacks. Weak to dark and ground, which is like fucking abhorrent. Um, for a mon that wants to eat uh, physical hits, it's weak to ghost, which is awful as well. Um, it will stand up to like neutral attacks, but I think just being weak to like knockoff and earthquake specifically 
is pretty bad for it. Claude Zire will sit on it forever. Heatran will sit on it forever and not even care. You can't really break anything very well. I guess the Nasty Flood set is okay. Like, it can get stuff done, but like, if I... I'll put it in C tier because it can get stuff done. I think it is better than Garchomp and, and Tyranitar in that sense. But like, just don't run it. Don't, don't you. Don't, don't do that to yourself. Uh, Pelipper is here and... Pelipper's only good on Rain, and Rain isn't the greatest. Like, it's not, it's not, not even the, not the greatest. It's just not good. Because look at all the mons that are, like, good. And they, they all, like, resist water or have, like, Terra option. That's just water. Fucking terrible into Ogre Pond. I guess you do kill with, like, Banded Close Combat Verascuta, but, I mean, even that. Um, I think Pelipper was god tier when Archaladon was in the game, and now it's, like, it's mid. I think it's like top of mid because it's niche is like okay. And while we're at it, uh, did I put Barascuta on this tier list? No, I did not. Which is a big mess up on my part. But I was going to put Barascuta in like D tier. Uh, but no, sorry, sorry, C tier. Same tier as uh, Pelipper. Uh, Primarina is here and this is like, I think the best Assault Vessel mod in the game. It will always eat special hits no matter what. And then beat the mod that it's going to. It, 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 just, it just beats them on and if they have like an iron valiant and iron moth you beat both of them if they have drag a uh, special dragon pull iron moth iron valiant you beat all of them if they have raging bolt you tear it you beat it right primarina will beat what you want it to and that's all you can really ask it will sponge hits it can flip turn out it can do big damage it can run cow stab you can run torrent with that it's just good solid mon I, I do love Primarina. I think it is like one of the all stars of OU. I think it is better than like Enamorous because of just consistency. Like Primarina will always be a stopgap against like hyper offense, which is huge. Because being up one mod against a hyper, um, a hyper offense team, or sorry, being able to kill like a mon guaranteed with hyper offense, like they already have one mon dead because of like spikes or hazards or whatever. So then they're running with four mons at the very least against your five or six month team, which means you're up in sacks, which means you have like more wiggle room. It's not doesn't it's like a not like an auto win, but it's still like a very, very solid mod. Uh Rubombi webs are kind of mid. I'll put it in um C tier, top of C tier because it is a good lead. Actually I'm gonna move like both of the leads up to like the top of C tier just because like they're good. You have reasons to run them, but like they're just very inconsistent like webs the whole idea is that you just want to run like slower attackers but then you run into like boots on mons and like it just doesn't feel the greatest to play um rillaboom um strong grass stab grassy glide it will always be good i do think it is like i think it's better than latias like the non ou mons here but like not the greatest because like there's good like fire types are great you don't do honestly like you don't do very well into like great tusk which is really funny because it's weak to you um kind of get owned by dragonite your setup fodder owned by corviknight but then every other mon you beat if a mon wants to tear a water they have to respect the, the uh, rillaboom which like just priority uh, uh, 70 power priority move just keeps everything in check and like you're, you're good defensively you you have team support you have grassy terrain which enables like certain mods that are weaker to earthquake to like thrive like heatran just owns um clouds there. It goes from being like fodder to just beats it um goldango goes to do the same thing so i think i think willaboom will always be like a, a decent mon I, I don't think now it's like in gen gen 8 it was s tier but now it's kind of like falling off a lot um roaring moon good setup sweeper it's very it's not versatile and like how it does but it's kind of versatile in like what it does right like it, or um sorry it's not versatile in what it does but it is versatile in like how it does because of one singular move slot which is brick break or earthquake both are good both will get the job done um no matter what you run you will lose to don dozo but that, that's the life of being a physical attacker right um has the potential to run away with games faster than Roy, um than iron Val, which gives it points it beats like this entire row with um like terra flying generally um i do like it does lose to like don dozo but i mean like womp womp 
Um, you have to be a little bit careful against Raging Bolt, which is why I don't think that it's S tier. And it doesn't have like the support like Iron Validos. But like, you're good into King Gambit, you're good into Rillaboom, um, which are two like big things. Weavile's fallen off, so you don't have to like worry about being weak to Ice Shard no matter what. Um, it's just good mod. Uh, Rotom Washing Machine is, I think, I think B tier. It will always live a hit. Like it does, it does Rotom Wash things, right? If you think back to like any generation when Rotom got the wa um, Water Electric uh, type, it just does that. It um, can run Scarf. I, although I think Scarf is generally like, worse. Um, I, I just prefer the um, Rocky Helmet, Pain Split, Will O Wisp, Hydro Pump, uh, Volt Switch on specific teams where I just need the speed control. Um, specifically into like. Uh, if they're looking Gambit, I want to make sure that my Gambit outspeeds because I have low kick, or if there's a Miascarada, and I want to tear a seal to generate momentum, or like an Iron Crown, and I want to be faster than the Gambit, then I will run like Thunder Wave, but those are generally like more specific. Um, it it fell off like hugely because of Kyurem, because you just ne no matter what, you will never beat it. But like now that Kyurem's banned, I do think Rotom Wash should like rise up, maybe not to OU status, but like. Um, like solidly with a niche because before it used to be like meh like the, the thing would be like why would i run rotom who loses to like uh kiram with the trade-off of being decent when i could run like alola mola which loses to um kiram but can also like flip turn and scald and stuff right it's kind of just that um, Samurott is, I think, I think Samurott is broken because of its move, but like, it's not like broken tier mods. It's nowhere on the level of Goldango or Ogopon. Um, solidly S tier, or not S tier, A tier. Set up spikes with your own attack. Although I do think setting up spikes with your own attack is a little bit like less valuable. Just because like, I mean, if you're running Scarf, then you get owned. And being down a mod just isn't like, isn't the greatest. If you're Scarf as well, you do run into the issue of just getting owned by Darkrai if it hits its Focus Blast, which is not a good thing to want, or like, cross your fingers for. Um, although like, it does have a very spammable Dark type attack, I think more so than, um, Knockoff. So I'll probably like, move it, like, I'll put, I'll keep it below Glamora, but I do think it's like a very good mod. It's worse than Tusk, worse than Landorus, I think worse, less consistent than Iron Crown. No, it's not. No, it's not. But it's just, like, less splashable. Um, because, like, if you have, like, teams that have, like, Team Lu or, like, Great Tusk, or, like, Claude's Ire, like, you have spikes. You don't need Samurott, right? But, like, Scarf will always get up one layer of spikes unless it misses, which is, like, kind of inconsistent. If it was 100% accurate and had, like, like, the stats of, like, Greninja, for example... I think easy S tier mod, but like as it stands, like you run Sash, you're not faster than everything, and if you miss your first ceaseless edge, you're kind of crying, and if you run Scarf, if you miss a ceaseless edge, you're 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 dead. You can be taken advantage of because like a lot of mods like resist at least one of your stabs, and you have to kind of choose. Like if you luck like Dark Stab, then Iron like mid game Iron Val will come in and hit the gritty on you and kill you. Um, Scizor, mid, um, I think it's better than, like, Manaphy. I think it's one of the better mid mons. Um, okay, I think, I think it's like this, thinking about it. I think Blissey's the best mid mon. Um, but, like, Terra Steel Bullet Punch is a strong attack, right? I mean, it's just Scizor on drugs. Um, Superior is, I think, another, like, I'll put it in, like, Glare is really good. Free para, generate free turns, get leaf storms off. Is it? I don't think it's still OU, right? Like, I have not seen this guy. Yeah, he's not OU, but he should be. Yeah, he's UU solidly, but like, still good. Like, Terra Ground, you now beat like all of your checks. I, I think Terra Water might be a little bit better now. Um, I like Terra Water. It still beats like what you intended to, but you can still hit like, um, Sloking Galar, specifically. Um, I have on occasion where, like, I I can, like, see myself beating or chipping down a Heatran enough, run, like, a Terra that 
beats Slow King. However, I think that is bad and it is niche. Terra Stellar is bad. Don't run it. Just, just don't. Just click Leaf Storm to get the plus two instead of clicking Terra Stellar and getting like plus one and then still sucking. Um, Sinastia has had a resurgence because of that one Blender team. I think it is a pretty good Grass type. I could see it being OU. Um, grass Ghost is is good with high defense. It, it it's like, I mean it's it's just, it's just good. It clicks Calm Mind. And then it clicks Macha Gacha, Shadow Ball, Willow Wisp. It's high defense, boosting its special defense. It is hard to get going. However, like once it gets going, it won't stop going. Um, so I'll put it in like C tier. I do think it is still pretty mid, but it's funny. I, I like I like Sinastra. It's got a little funny face. Look at that. It, 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 it's it's a cute little guy. Um, Skarmory kind of does what um, Corviknight does, but in my opinion, a little worse. I'll put it, like, I'll put it in C tier, um, just below, like, Rebombi and Ninetales. Like, it's just, if Skarmory, or if Corviknight could get up Spikes, which is a niche, it, it's still good, like, C tier doesn't mean, like, bad, it just means, like, you're outclassed, right? Because, right? I don't know, I just, like, Skarmory does have a pivoting option, which is really hurting it. And its ability is kind of a do-nothing ability. At least Corviknight can, like, pressure stall certain mons. But Skarmory, like, your net, like, Sturdy rarely comes into hand, in handy. And, like, it has kind of poor moveslot syndrome, where, like, you're running it because you want to run spikes. So you're kind of, like, compressed to running, like... Because if I'm not running spikes on my Skarmory, I'm not running Skarmory. I'm running, I'm running Corviknight, right? Yeah, like... Spikes, Roost, and then what, right? Um, its attack, I think, is a little bit lower. Yeah, it's a little bit lower than Corviknight, so you can run, like, Brave Bird for um, Iron Val and, like, Body Press, I guess. But then there's nothing you do on Goldango. At least, like, Corviknight can U-turn, which is another thing, like, in Corviknight's favor. It can, like, U-turn. If, if Skarmory had, like, Spikes plus U-turn, which I think... I think Skarmory got U-turn. I'm fairly certain on that, right? Am I crazy? Has Skarmory never had access to U-turn? I swear I remember that somewhere. Nope, Skarmory's never had access to U-turn. That's actually crazy. Um, but, like... Like, if I'm running this, like... Why not just run Corviknight and run spikes on a Mon that, like, can come in against Mons that, like, let it get up spikes? Or alternatively, just run rocks on, like, one of my other guys. Like, just, like, quick rocks on Great Tusk or, um, quick rocks on Landorus, um, Clefable, Tinglu, Gliscor, even. Uh, there's just... Like, too many, like, having spikes just doesn't feel like enough, you know? Um, Skeledurge, Unaware Wall, it's very solid. Torch Song can boost its stats. Um, can run, like, Earth Power. It ignores the setup sweepers. It, it be, it's good into Val, which is very nice. Um, with Terra Fairy, it's just good into the general metagame. Um, with Terra Water, it's worse into Raging Bolt, but it's still, like, it's still good because of, like, Tachyon Guy. Um, you are not weak to a King Gambit attack, which is points in your favor. However, because, like, if you didn't have to choose between which Terra, like, if you don't Terra Skeldurge, I think it, like, is fairly, like, mediocre into what it beats, because sometimes it just doesn't beat what you need to. But, like, with Terra Fairy, it's fairly consistent, um, into, like, a lot of the A tier guys, and then it starts struggling against the S tier guys. So I think B tier is very solid for Skeldurge. Um... Slow King is S tier, the greatest special pivot in the game. The greatest pivot in the game. Slow, chilly reception resets the weather. So like into like certain like weather teams, you can just run Slow King and have like Terra Water and say, this will be my walking wake answer. And it, it, it answers walking wake. It will do that. Um, and then it just chillies out and says, fuck you, goodbye, good night. Can run um, Future Sight, which, um, Combos well with the likes of like Zamazenta or Darkrai, King Gambit even. It was really broken with Kyurem in my opinion. Um, not because of um, Blizzard, I think the Blizzard set was um, incredibly niche and mediocre, but because of just like the defense. You just run like whatever Kyurem the team needs, 
plus chili reception and then cure him like one or 325 defense without doing anything just like as a passive effect of slow king pivoting out and getting in your mod for free it, it's it's so broken like every single one of these mods would appreciate a slow king galar in fact i'm i i think i have like a like a lot of slow king galar teams just because it's like that slashable there you spell it yep so you got one here with Hydreigon, one with here with like Talonflame, which is a little bit bad, but I, I think I stole this and swapped the, or like made like Moltres Talonflame, if I'm not mistaken. Um, this Hoopa has it. It's just great with getting mods in. It will like, it will generally always like, it's good into like Pult, which is crazy because it's a psychic type, but like it's Spinef is so big. It's a great stopgap to um, special gambits. So like, on certain teams that like can't afford to run like an all-purpose king gambit uh, counter you can just run slow king and say i will beat all of these special um iron valves and then i'll just have to figure out something for the physical like maybe great tusk or a terra terra ghost or like landris even um to like beat the terra steel variations it's just, it, 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 it's a great mod i think it is worse generally than like these mods because these mods can like just run away with games, but it's like the greatest supporting player, I think. Ting Lucif is one of the greater ground types. I think top of, I think because of its lack of recovery and prone, like it's, it's very prone to getting worn down throughout the game, but like early to mid game, it is incredible as a special wall because it has like extra spadef. It's great as like just a general wall because it's defense and um, HP are just naturally so high. Um, ground, uh, ground Dark is great. It has access to Earthquake, access to Ruination, so, which is like, there, there's nothing immune to Ruination, so you can always like guarantee you get half chip off onto a Mon, which sometimes is enough, other times it's not, it just depends on your team. Um, access to both the, um, the hazards that are relevant, it has access to Whirlwind, which is huge. Against like setup sweepers, you can kind of just like Whirlwind Mons out and like, I've run into like an annoying thing where like, you just play the odds. If you whirlwind and get in like an iron vowel before like iron vowel is ready to sweep, you can kind of just say, okay, well, I won't lose to iron vowel, which is very nice, very nice. And I'm to worry about that too much. So I, the more I think about it, the more I want to, I'm gonna put it in like top of A tier. I think like there's a lot of ground types, there's a lot of water types, but like there's there's a reason for that, right? Ground water, just good times. Um, Tinkaton's ha had a, a uh, resurgence lately. I think it is kind of niche in what it does but it's good in that niche it has pickpocket so you run like air balloon and then you kind of just beat everything by stealing their items para knockoff gigaton current rocks um current encore it, it's just very disruptive as a pokemon i think gigaton sets are a little bit worse like if i'm running tigaton um i'm probably running something like like air balloon with um, mold breaker so I can always get a Brox versus Hatterene um, with um, knockoff, um, stealth rocks, thunder wave, and encore. And just accepting that I'm not doing damage with damage with Tinkaton, I'm just here to be annoying and to make sure that my opponent can't do what they want. Um, it's okay, it, it does lose a tusk pretty pretty easily there's nothing you can really do but like it's fine um does lose to like all of the ground types if you can't thunder wave something in my opinion you're like tingatong will not get progress off but it is a good para spammer um better than zapdos in my opinion in just the para regards i'll put it like top of c tier because it is pretty replaceable on team just like for more consistent general bonds um, Torkoal, I think, is the same tier as Pelipper. Um, a little bit better because the Sun Mons are generally better. But the problem is, um, it's just the thing with, like, relying on a, something that just, like, isn't, like, you, <sighs> okay, the thing with Booster Energy is that, you know, when I switch my Iron Bell in, I'll have, you know, my booster set up, and I just can't switch out, and I'll keep my booster that entire game. 
but like with the quirk with um like electric terrain and the sun is you can never know exactly when you'll have to switch that iron valon so you get the quirk drive boost on iron valon great you have a you have a quirk drive boosted iron valon you have booster speed with an item what the the terrain could run out at any point you can get owned by grassy terrain or um whatever or in the case of like weather i mean a low the nine tails isn't the greatest but like i mean you can run nine tails run into um rain but like ignoring like the less consistent more niche weather condition or weather centers sloking galar sloking galar just Like, like, sitting on a team, Sloking Galar will just in completely own all of, all of Sun. Like, Paris Sloking is, like, something that can, like, reliably, like, check Tusk and Moon, like, I don't know, like, like a Landris, for example. And then all of a sudden, Torkoal just feels bad. It's not terrible because, like, you're stacking, like, just generally good mons together, and you can, you can really just make a Sun Core, like, like this. And then just like run like King Gambit. I don't know. This like um maybe like King Lu. No, no, that's way that is way too many like dark wing ones. But you get you 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 get, you get the point, right? Like you can just run like a small sun core in the same like general idea as rain and get, just get the job done. But like I I just rather run booster attack tusk or like just boots tusk not to worry about sun because Torkoal just isn't a good mod in and of itself so I don't know like I just think justifying like a whole team slot for a 33 attack like boost on tusk is not the worst but it's not like I think it is worse than just running like Glamora and getting up hazard like I think I think that's just better team support or Samurai and getting up hazards or Iron Crown and ensuring that you like are good into like Bolt or Pult or whatever. Um, Pex is here. I don't know why Pex is here. I think it is um, same tier as Amoongus, right? Like it's okay, but it's not the greatest. Never would run these two mons over like this or that or um, uh, Sloking Galar, especially like a Solvest Pex appeared. For a little bit because people were missing um g king and then g king came out and, and toxapex fell how far did toxapex fall just yu yu just yu yu wow that's actually kind of incredible props pex from being i think it still has like yeah it still has like okay sets and it does set itself apart through the access or through the usage of um uh, infestation um, so if you're gonna run like a Soul Vest Pax, please just run Infestation. That's the only reason why I would run this thing over Sloking Galar. Like it, it does have like some advantages. Like it, it will beat Tusk without tearing. No, it won't. No, it won't. Um, I lied. It will beat like Roaring Moon without tearing, but like womp womp. Not phenomenal. It's not. It's not very good. It still loses to like Submons. It, it will always lose to Gambit and Raging Bolt. Um, it's, it's just setup fodder for so much. And one psychic noise from like any of the psychic noise spammers like Primarina, Sloking Galar sometimes runs it. Um, I know um, it's common on Hatcherine. One attack, or one of that, and you're just kind of screwed. Ursaluna is, like it does a lot of damage. It's good on Trick Room, but it's not necessarily good on like anything else in my opinion. Um, broken in Yu Yu, absolutely phenomenal. It was broken in the early stages whenever we just like didn't know because, like, the way things go whenever a mod is released, it's is people run it to do like a lot of damage. Same thing with like like um, Volcanion or Walking Wake, and then we figure out how to deal with it, right? Like we figure out like, oh, you can't just go Corviknight on Ursaluna. It's gonna get to plus two and kill you. You have to chip it down or, you know, beat it through offense or stall out the trick room turns. Like, it will, like, there's a little, we'll get, like, stuff done um, in trick room. But it's just, like, the fact that you have to run trick room. And trick room is not good. It is not a consistent play style. It's very consistent. Um, you, you, you will win and lose 
to the same team, I think, like, it's like 50-50, I think. And it's just, it's not even for anything. It's just like, can you get your turns right? Right, both of your stabs you have immunities to. So, an Ursa, like, a, a Trick Room team and with Ursa Luna will win and lose to the exact same teams just about every time. And it's literally just down to, do they go to Landorus or do they go to Polt? Do they go to Corviknight or do they go to Goldango, right? You're just like stuck in that. Or do they just go Corviknight, eat the the um, the uh, facade hit and then just spam Roost and then boom, your Trick Room's done. And now I have a, um, a King Gambit that's boosted by its allies or an Ogre Pond that can now Terra or uh, Primarina or literally anything. And like mid, mid problem with Trick Room. I think it's better than Scizor, who is worse than Sinastra. And Scizor is on the same level as like Halucha and the Mons below it. I think Garchomp is probably the worst of the Mons here. And I think Tyranitar should go to D tier. Just, just above Ogre Pond, I think. Um, Walking Wake, good Sun Mon, but like outside of Sun, it's not very good. And like we figured out how to beat Walking Wake. Um, got Ogre Pond, who is immune, and if it locks Dragon Pulse, then Katera and um, do a lot of damage with either Horn Leech or um, Power Whip. If you're, if you're Woodhammer, then you will trade. But like trading isn't bad because Walking Wake is one of the premier Sun attackers, which is still good, right? It's but it's not like the greatest. Um, outside of Sun, which I think Sun is a C tier playstyle, so I'll keep. I'll put Walking Wake like same level as Greninja, right? It is a big threat, and you have to respect it in building a team, right? Like, um, for example, um, this team. I was building it, and I was like, wow, I get owned by Walking Wake, so I had to. I had to run an Azumarill just to generate more turns versus um, Sun. Um, this team, um, I have not used it. Because it gets owned by Walking Wake. Um, this team, um, I have to run Terra Water Sloking. And if I run to Sun, I have to make sure that I can beat the arms race to Terra Water my Sloking. Um, just stuff like that. Like It does put a, a restraint on team building. But if you want to make just a, team, a consistent team and just say, well, if I run to Walking Wake, I'm just going to have to play better. That's fine. You will still get like wins. Um, Weavile's fallen off um, to Yuyu, however, I do think that is like strictly because Kyurem is the better ice type, and why would you run Weavile when Kyurem is here, right? Weavile has like the problem by where like so many ice types are just broken and take a while to get banned, right? We have the same thing with like Bax Caliber. Why would I run Weavile whenever I can just run Bax Caliber? Why would I run Weavile whenever I can run like uh, Shimpao? Why would I run Weavile whenever I can run uh, Kyurem now? Right, it's it's the same thing over and over again. But now that Kyurem is banned, I think Weavile will pick up in usage. Dark Ice is just good. It has um, momentum generation in knockoff, so it can always ge generate progress. It has triple axle. And the, another thing about knockoff is that like it's self-sufficient, right? Like if you have a helmet on, we Weavile like knocks up the helmet on off, it can now beat the Corviknight. It won't always beat Corviknight, but it can. Um, which is nice, it has low kick, which means like, um, I'm pretty sure it fucking dies to plus two King Gambit Sucker Punch, but like, if it doesn't get the plus two, you can low kick the Gambit and just kill it. Because you're not tear- why- why would you tear a flying a King Gambit versus a Weavile with Ice Shard, right? That, that's just- that's just bad. You're gonna lose to the Raging Bulls in the back, or any of the mods that don't drop to one plus two Sucker Punch, right? So, then- you you just die a low kick and hope or, or hope that they don't have it um i think four attacks is like for that reason the best um sword dance can get stuff done but like i i would just run four attacks generally um i think it, it's like as consistent to me as walking wake but not as good as walking wake um i do think um i do think we will we'll get more done than like sarah Ledge. let me let me go and like rearrange this i think skeletage is probably Worse than worse than uh, Heatran, but better than better than like these two guys. I think no, I think I think Cinderace is better than these, except for Moltres. Uh, I think Weavile is more consistent than Rillaboom. 
I think Deoxys is the least consistent. At least it's more consistent than um, Superior, which is a little bit less consistent. Um, Weezing Galar is not the greatest, but you, I don't know, it's just not good. Like, Defog is okay, but that's his whole leash. And it doesn't even beat Goldango, it just fucking Defog versus it. And then, like, big, big whoop. No, my my hazards. Well, you're running a Weezing. You're running, you're running a five-bond team, plus Weezing. And sometimes it won't get the Defog off, because they'll go into Goldango, you'll try and, like, kill the Tusk in front of you. Because if you don't, then the Tusk is gonna kill you. Also, that's another thing. You don't beat, like, any Pokemon you're supposed to beat. You don't you know, beat Darkrai. You don't beat Iron... You can beat Iron Battles. I'll give you that. You do beat non shock Iron Battles. But you don't beat, like, Gambit. You're not running speed on this. You need to run all the book you can. So you just die to Iron Head. I mean, like, you can live because you, you're, like, taking, like, non... Supreme Overlord boosted, but like not even. Um, you're pretty, like you're okay into Ogre Pond. You're okay into physical attackers, but not even the greatest, even, right? Like, Miascarada can still brute force through you. Um, you're prone to hazards. Um, prone to just getting chipped through the game. Like a burn is gonna do a lot. If you get knocked off at all, then you don't have leftovers. You don't have boots or whatever. You take a lot of damage. Um, Bad Spadef is pretty big considering like a lot of the top mons will just run special attacks like Dragapult just blows you up. You just don't do what you're supposed to do at all, right? And so why would I run, why would I run Weezing Galar to get a guaranteed defog when I can just run boots on my mons and in the place of Weezing, Weezing Galar run an Iron Vow so I can have like a uh, cleaning potential or a Raging Bolt, so I can have late game cleaning potential, or a Primarina and just be good defensively, or like, see, like, there, 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 there's zero reason to run Weezing. I ran a, a Specs Weezing set because that's funny. Not because I wanted to win. Right? I literally, in the description, it said, here's a link to a good team. And it's just the same team, and but instead of Weezing, it's just Iron Vow, because Iron Vow will always get something done. Weezing will not always get something done. I think Weezing will, like, 50% of the time get a defog off, and the other 50% of the time just die in one hit. Um, uh, Zamazenta, um, Broken Mon. To me, it feels like if King Gambit could run away with the game easier. If your opponent doesn't have a ghost type, you win. If your opponent has expended their Terra and can't Terra Fairy randomly, Zamazenta will win. Um, it's very uncompetitive in the ways that Zom just wins, right? It does struggle into like Landorus, but like you can chip that down over the course of a game. And if an opponent has Landorus, like, I mean, you, you lose, but you beat Dragonite. You beat every single physical attack in a way that Dondozo doesn't because you boost your defense, so you take less damage, while you boost your offense. You lose, like, with this pulled, which is, like, I guess, points against it. So maybe I won't put it in, like, broken tier. I'll just put it in S tier. <laughs> I mean, come on. Come on. But it is very broken. It, 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 it just, like, one move slot, and it, it changes who it beats, right? You can run, um... You can run, like, obviously you're running Body Press at a default. You can run, like, Crunch, Heavy Slam, Ice Fang, even if you just want to blow Landers away. Um, play Rough, Psychic Fangs. Um, I think Play Rough is a good option. Um, into, like, Raging Bolt, however, you just beat it with Body Press. Um, like, like, this set beats, like, half of the tier, right? You, you're, you're, it's like... Your, your checks to this is Don Dozo and like physically defensive Pult and like unaware walls. Which, I mean, congratulations running like, in my opinion, was, was like a mediocre mon. Like Skeletor still has its role, like obviously, but I think it has most of its role because of Zom is just so broken. Um, I will put Zom like above uh, Raging Bolt. 
I think it's just below King Gambit, but like you can make an argument for Zom being broken, right? Um, Zapdos, Final Mon. Um, it's had a resurgence. Paraspan is very good. Being able to like, not reliably, but passively have the chance to lower your opponent's speed um, just by existing means that they're less likely to click like the quote unquote low risk attacks, right? You're going to knock off. You're even going to like Pokemon that you should not beat, like Weavile and Miascarada, who because like they click Turbolaxel, they lose their Zapdos, but they like essentially like lose their Weavile and Miascarada because these mods are balanced around them being fast, not them being bulky. So like this mod with no speed is like a ZU mod. Same thing with Weavile, right? Um, so Zapdos will like automatically deter everything. It has a high special attack so like even uninvested it will do like big respectable damage it's good into like all of the defensive ground types generally I, no no not even it's just good into like the top two um it's okay into glyscore because you will do a lot with hurricane but you have to hit hurricane you're bad into ting loon cloud Zire, but i mean the ground type beats the electric type whoa um, electric flying is just at a baseline pretty solid because um, let me actually look I I don't know where all the electric flyings have landed right there I mean there's an electric flying in every single tier <laughs> except for PU but technically not because you have Oricorio but like you get all of the advantages of being electric with zero downside there is no trade-off for being electric type when you're electric when you're already a flying type because you're off the ground you're already immune, immune to ground so adding a ground weak just doesn't do anything it's different it's like it is technically different from like levitating le electric types in the sense that like you can be hit by ground type attacks but zapdos just won't unless you like smack it down but like oh my god you you, you got hit by fucking smackdown you, you please win versus the smackdown user um i think it is worse than Moltres, but like they're pretty interchangeable in the sense that like both of them just deter physical attacks and hit with strong strong attacks um i do just personally think that zapdos is a little bit better um because like para will always accomplish something it's like non-ground non-electric type target sorry um like landers doesn't want to click u-turn tusk doesn't want to click spin or knockoff or close combat or even like ice spinner like it doesn't it's not gonna like oko the zapdos so you have to click it twice and like it's fine like a slow tusk like tusk is balanced around being slow so it's like not as bad as like meowscarada or weavile but, like it's so bad right you're gonna like iron crown you can always like generate turns off of that samurai doesn't really want to attack into you however samurai is a little bit different of a case because like samurai generally just wants to die um dragonite is like okay into you but like clicks ice spinner into you gets parried and then you beat it because it gets full parried whenever it doesn't need or whenever it needs to like not um you beat primarina beat roaring moon for the same philosophy as dragonite right 30 percent of the time 100 percent of the time so this is the ou tier list of just mods that i think are generally viable um or mods that i've seen on the ladder i played quite a bit of mods recently um, I'm taking a bit of a break from OU, but like, I, I still visit the tier, I still keep up with things. Um, these are just mods that I've seen used enough times on like the 1700s plus ladders on non-gimmick teams that I feel I, I should tier. Um, I'm missing Barascuta, but I mean, Barascuta would be a C tier. Same, same tier as Pelipper. It's just like, not as, it, it, it's just a mid weather condition it's still okay you'll, you'll still get wins but like i think less consistently like if you were to just make a team off of like the s and a tier mods you would do great you would like maybe not be the best team because i think to be a good team you will have to like dip into like the b and even c tier mods sometimes like just because a mod is in c or d tier doesn't mean it can't fulfill a role right like these these mods all do fulfill like some valuable option right like blaziken can like blow holes through like the most popular bulky mons with the power of its stabs or 
like um Amungus has a a niche in the fact that like it's a regenerator mod that isn't like weak to electric it's you know stuff like that <sighs> it's just like generally my opinion of like is it consistent is it just like mid and out like okay i, I know i should have like specified this earlier like the tier list is kind of self-explanatory just from the from like a screenshot perspective but um how i generally do it is like especially um for like ou tiering um is f is like unviable but you can technically use it and it will have a niche but it's a gimmicky niche um d tier is like it will it has like a niche it will accomplish that niche um but it's not good into everything else or it's like it's it's a good niche but it's unreliable in that right in the sense of like ogre pond like it can run away with games but it's very un inconsistent because like it's so prone to everything um c tier is just mid like can use it it's not gonna make or break a team like you don't feel like you're shooting yourself yourself in the foot but like it's it's a mid mod it's outclassed by other things that do its job just a little bit better or do its job just a little bit more reliably or consistently or it's as um it's like a mod that should be in d tier but like it is unreliable but it's like a little bit more reliable for like a certain trait right like for example i think guard chomp is a little bit more cons consistent than an ogre pawn because it can run two sets and it has access to like um sword stance plus scale shot and it can tear into whatever um, I, I run back to like ogre pawn but like i'm just looking at ogre pawn it's right on my periphery um b tier is like a good just good ou mon you can add it to a team it'll, it will do stuff a tier is like best like very good s tier is best of the best and then broken is broken um ignoring the brokenness like the, these mods are, are um, s tier they're not i don't think that they're the best mods i think dragapult is number one like like i think i think the tier list without the broken tier would probably look something like uh let's see something like this ignoring the broken tier it would probably look like this but i think these mods so fundamentally change the way that you play against a team that having them not in the broken tier would be disingenuous um well that is the tier list two hours and 11 minutes just working on it a little silly tier list it's awesome um i highly doubt anyone's gonna watch at this point but if you do i i appreciate it thank you thank you um you're awesome um it is 3 a.m right now so i'm going to go to sleep take a big snooze and go to class tomorrow oh no way i have a oh, oh i'm a fucking idiot i have a construction um i'm volunteering to help build some houses um I have that construction project um, tomorrow at 8.30, so I will be dead tired, but that's fine. I don't know. I won't have class, so I can just like go to sleep like once I get back and take a shower because I do not sleep without taking a shower because not showering is annoying. Um, but yeah, tier list um, of the current state of OU. I, I, I stand by a lot of these opinions. I don't think that they're like too controversial. Um, as far as things go, maybe like Garchomp fan one two three will be really really upset that Garchomp is in C tier as opposed to S tier where it belongs. But I mean it happens. Um, everyone will always like there there will always be just like minor disagreements. But I think generally this is just like this is a very popularly agreed upon tier list. It's kind of just like I mean the, the the top ten are within A tier, right? I think so. Iron Moth. No, Iron Moth is. I, I think Iron Moth is a mediocre mod, but it's still good, right? It just happens. <laughs> wait, wait, I, ju I just, <laughs> I just realized it's a great tusk, great tusk. That's awesome. Um, well, thank you for watching. I'm going to go to sleep now. Bye.